Hello to ladies and gentlemen, seniors and youth. It's the men's final of the UBA year 1 of 10 finals here in Taipei. The participants in this one, Zhenzhou University on the left, and that's not a mistake, it's Sixing University, both representing the men's and women's side of things. The date is March 20th. The location is the Taipei Arena. I'm Ryan Chen, your play-by-play, -play, joined by Coach Metcalf on another English broadcast of UBA Finals. That's Ryan, excited to be back for what's sure to be an exciting game and last game of this college season here in Taiwan. Right now it's a story of two powerhouses who were upstarts just a few short years ago. On the Sixing side, they won the second division in the year 107. That was just three seasons ago, so that would be 2019. But now I've made it to the first division and now took on Jianxing University yesterday with a lot of pro prospects. We're talking about like the likes of Gu Ma or Chen Fan Bo Yin. But they were able to take them down largely because of their stability and then their size down low. Uh, that's right, like you said, they put a lot of effort as an as a academic institution into their athletic program. We saw the results on the women's side and, and today we see the men's side playing for a championship once again. Had a great game yesterday and a game that probably weren't expected to win, but uh, again, behind the 20 points from their transfer students, Evoca, the 2020, they were able to beat Jinxing and make their way into the championship game today. One of the key players for them who's stepped up big time is number seven. Where is he on my notes? Wei Ting is one of them as the team has found their footing in their zone defense, just like on the women's side. Yeah, again, we see the same coach for both the women's and men's side using a different zone defense. The Sissing team does a great job of using that zone as a weapon, creating turnovers, and then just getting out and let their athletes attack on the break. Again, we're going to see completely different styles on both sides of the ball in this championship game, and it's going to be a great matchup. Of course, there is a little bit of a hampering injury on that last closeout. Meanwhile, on the other side for Zenzi University, their play a lot of times surrounding DND, that's Andy Mustafa Ziang. Their import, their Taiwan University transfer in the center of a lot of other talented possible pro prospects, including sophomore Yo Aito. Yeah, again, last year's MVP, Sungzhu University, another team that uh, came from the Division II. And, uh, again, for those not familiar with Taiwanese basketball, uh, it's kind of like European soccer where they have relegation and delegation. Uh, and this team played up from Division II. And, won their first championship in the Division I last year against this Sushin team, and now they're going for a back-to-back -back with team basketball, led from their coach who, who played from a, a team system in professional leagues here in Taiwan. Again, they're looking to see if the team could beat individual once again this year. Last season was their first trip to the Final Four, and they came out victorious, so in the end, a 21-3 campaign Forward number 15, Zhang Zhenya, scored 25 points, hitting five threes. He's a guy that a lot of pro teams are keeping an eye out for as he's expected to make the jump to the professional level in the future. Yeah, again, you can see the, the chemistry that they have on the sidelines. Again, a lot of young prospects here, and, and like you said, Ryan, with the renewed upstart in professional basketball here in Taiwan. A lot of pressure to win this championship, but again, uh, more pressure because it could be some of these younger players' last collegiate competition. Their opponents was Sushing last season, though they did lead to 24 turnovers and allowed 22 free throws. That final score was 82 to 70. Of course, Sushing, without Albashir, who's now performing excellently at the pro level, but on the Tenzi University side, they also sent four pros to one league's the draft. And so a whole team, they say jokingly, is actually composed of Zinzi University players. And again, and that's where this is a matchup of the same two schools, but rosters very, very different, especially as far as who's contributing on the court for the Sushi University. But uh, it's sure to be an exciting matchup regardless. 
the player that's on screen right now sitting out is Ronald Ophia from Latvia playing his first season with the Zenzi University team, a team who averages the highest field goal percentage, 52% from two, 30% from three point range. A team, both of the teams actually, have found themselves scrimmaging with pro level teams for almost the entirety of the summertime. So this high level of basketball. Yeah, again, the teams love to play against these uh, professional teams love to play against these college teams because they have systems that they know how to play. They're not just playing street ball out there. It's, they have high level competition, high level athletes, uh, so they can be competitive. And, and these two college teams can, can compete with any of the professional teams here in Taiwan. Now for Sushing, they, just like the women's team, average the most steals in the league at 13.1 per game, but they also average the most blocked shots at 4.3. And they can do it from a, any number of players. But Daniel is the kind of center that gets most of the majority of the minutes. Yeah, again, and that's where that, we said earlier, they use that zone as a weapon, able to create turnovers, trapping. They have long wingspan defenders on both the front line and behind. Uh, tough challenge for any team. But uh, again, if there's any team that can solve that today, it's, it's this NCZU team. But like we mentioned, both teams might be game planning a little bit for the future. Maybe Tinda was a little bit lackadaisical in their game against Wanan, who is the Cinderella story of this tournament. It was a tie game, 35 to 35, early in the third quarter. But the buzzer beater by the number 10 for them off the bank ended up leading the game by 12 points, and that was enough momentum. Wanan, though, was a lot of their own players who we expect to grow with the program as well. But of course, we're going to see the <laughs> Pau celebration turned into another all-out effort by Tang Zhenfeng and the uh, coaching staff for Zixing trying to do it all over again. It's the same exact staff. Yeah, a tough challenge for for any coaching staff to come out of one championship game and, and then play another one right off the bat. But I'm sure it's made a little bit easier because of the fact that they won the first championship game. Now he has championship experience that he can share with this team. Right? Wow. Absolutely. Yeah, these final four games similar to how the NCAA tournament games are in, in the U.S. Ushering crowds out, ushering crowds in. Right now they're waiting for some of the fans of these men's teams after we had a great turnout from the women's final. And as soon as they get ushered to their seats, I'm sure that we'll have an exciting introduction for, for both of these rosters. Additionally, they're also swapping out the nets on the Zenzi University basket. I don't know how that happened. It must be in some of warm-ups because we didn't see a lot of makes in that women's final. A defensive battle leading to a one-point win for the Sushin women. We did not. <laughs> so mentioned, head coach Chen Zui, decorated SBL player, number of seasons with Daxing and with Hu Yuan, has also find himself in some color commentating roles on time where he's not training the university team as his day job. Kind of interesting to see the influx and transfer of personnel from college to pro and pro down to college as well. But it goes to show how basketball has grown so much in Taiwan in just the last two years, pretty incredibly during a pandemic period. Yeah, Ray is his English name. He's actually been coaching for uh, for almost 10 years. He was coaching while as a player, coaching for for the uh, team that just lost in the women's finals, the NTNU men's team did a great job with them, but ended up coming to this NCCU team. Their school wanted to start to build up this basketball program, and he's just done a great job instilling his own footprint, uh, creating a great team culture, getting great players that fit his system, and, and it showed with their championship last year, and 
uh, he's hoping for a repeat of that success this year. Well, of the uh, four players to go to the pro level for um, Atlanta University includes a four Zheng Yuhao, center Ni Oma, another we call Taiwan student, University student exception at the pro level. Little guard and hustler Wang Zhengyuan, most notably was a steals leader in Hong Kai Jia. And, and that's where you, you have to appreciate the job that he's done this year. Again, losing uh, not just four contributing players, but four players who can play at the professional level. Uh, to be able to play at such a high level this season is, is quite an accomplishment and, and says a lot about the job that he and that coaching staff have done. Have you ever found that a uh, delay in the pregame routine is kind of mess with a team more so than the other? Uh, it's all just a matter of the details right now. Uh, these players over here for Sushin, they're just shooting, waiting for this clock to go down. Some guys sitting down, waiting for this clock to then go down. They've been waiting for this game since the beginning of the season. So uh, another two minutes isn't going to hurt either side. Since the university does dominate the rebounds, leading the league with 50.2 per game, and also having the lead in offensive and defensive rebounding. Uh, I don't know if that story is going to hold as Sushing loved to play with two, sometimes even three centers in a yesterday's matchup against Jianxing. So Jianxing is one of those, what you would call the skitterbug teams. We like to play on the perimeter, play extremely fast, and take a lot of outside shots. Sensei University is a little bit more balanced. Yeah, Sensei University relies more on that fast break and then sharing the ball, playing left to right in the half court. But again, you can't do any of that without getting those rebounds. So uh, like you mentioned, Ryan, it's going to be a key to see if they're able to keep these Sensei players off the defensive glass or off the offensive glass and be able to get into their sets easily. It's a tale of really two very different teams as Zenzi University dominating the field with 92.9 points per game. Sushin did take five losses during the regular season, averaging 78 points per game. But sometimes winning down the stretch like they have kind of forges that team chemistry even more so than just having a maybe supremely talented team from the very beginning. Exactly. They've They've been through those trials and tribulations, and I'm sure that it's all going to come together, and they'll be able to play together as a team throughout this this championship game.
在今天呢，开场之前，我们有一段呢惊喜的影片要送给呢所有呢来到台北小巨蛋的球员以及球迷朋友。
Hey, what's up？ 这是一瘦瘦子小巨蛋朋友们，大家好！你们准备好迎接最刺激的总决赛了吗？我在这里也为所有的球员们加油，希望你们在场上可以拿出最好的表现，专注当下的努力，一起成为更好的我们。It's your time, UBA. Let's go！ 为什么瘦子呢会来拍这一段影片？因为呢，我们透过了问卷的调查，我们所有的球员当中最喜欢的艺人，而且歌单里面都有瘦子，所以也感谢瘦子特别的录了这一段影片呢，送给所有的球员跟所有的球迷朋友。一百一十学年度富邦人寿大专篮球联赛男子组总冠军赛正式开始。更好的世新大学马上呢，要为各位介绍呢，今天比赛当中呢最重要的主角——世新大学篮球队球员登录名单。四号小巨人李宗汉，这一边号十一号后卫陈龙凯。车一边号十三号前锋曾维平，车一边号三十四号萨巴西。球衣背号八十号 ，bling bling， 吴柏林。球衣背号九十六号，刘洋。接着呢，要为各位介绍世新大学篮球队先发五的名单。所以，背后三十二号，乡民的最爱吴佩嘉。那么，所以背后八号与波卡。觉得正常呢，是球衣背号三十五号中锋 Daniel。球衣背号二十四号小贺剑鳄鱼。最后呢，为各位介绍球衣编号六号后卫李威霆。四星大学呢
队总教练何振峰，教练郭长红，许恩惠领队吕隆奇。另外呢，我们也欢迎吴永前校长、陈清河以及杨胜玉两位副校长特别莅临活动现场。更好的政治大学。介绍政治大学的队球员登录名单。陈建浩一号前锋小图涂一涵。这一边号五号后卫林立。十一点号九号后卫曾朝胜，十一点号二十三号前锋李允杰。二十五号前锋钟礼祥，接着登场呢是九十一号的前锋黄子轩。接着呢，为各位介绍政治大学他队先发的名单 ：Starting Five。这一边号七号后卫尤爱哲。接着登场呢，是我们这一边号十号王凯玉。那么团体王，这一边号二十一号中锋 M D 丁恩迪。这一边号零号后卫林彦琪。最后呢，为各位介绍球衣编号十五号前锋曾振阳。政治大学呢，这总教练陈子威，教练范耿祥、孙炳宏、朱立新。那也欢迎了我们郭明正校长以及呢吕杰如主任特别莅临活动活动的现场。也谢谢呢所有的学校老师同学对我们活动大力的支持，谢谢。
have it, the starters for Sijin University and Vicenza University. There was talk in the middle of the season of Coach Zui saying, Dante, I should start off the bench because he'll do that a little bit in the pros, but not going to be doing it in the championship game here in March. Well, and that's the flexibility you have when you dominate the regular season. You can mix up some lineups, give people some different opportunities, let them practice different roles. But when it comes to a championship game, you're going to have your players with championship experience and your best players on the court as much as possible. On the other side, you don't know if Sishin is going to feature Iboka or feature Li Weiting. Those two guys, capable scorers, and Li Weiting, especially with a variety of offensive moves. Iboka, kind of the guy that goes to the basket with energy, grab a few extra offensive rebounds. Yeah, Sishin just has so many different offensive weapons out there that can go one on one, that can crash the offensive boards. Uh, definitely a difficult opponent for this team oriented in terms of university team today. And a number of their starters, especially on the guard spot, Li Yanting and Yo Aizu, both from Nunan High School, a high school that's produced a lot of pro prospects and, a, and now a lot of collegiate stars. Yeah, again, we, we talked before about how this is a relatively young program in Taiwan. And for those of you who joined us for the player introductions, it's really impressive. That, the crowd reaction you get to this young program, but some of the best high schoolers have started to go to this university and they've moved on to the pros, so it's really impressive what they've done so far. And for tip-off, you see Yu Yuting, Yu Aizhe, Yang Hong Kai Yu, Zhang Zhenya, and Tian Di are the starters for Tianzi University. On this side, the Sushin, Li Weiqi, Xin Yong Hao, Yu Falka, Xu Pei Xia, and Daniel will be the starters. Yeah, you talked about it earlier, just a huge front line out there for the Sushin University team. And again, they're used to using that side to create difficulties for opponents, but this Griffin team, good job of creating their own turnovers and then they're running off that and getting out on the break. So. A tale of two completely different styles of play today, right? Taking the average of the starters, Sushin right now is going to be starting at 195 centimeters, which is about 6 foot 3, 6 foot 4. Up against Tensei University, not too shabby themselves, but only 191 centimeters. The shortest of them is Yoaito, sophomore, as mentioned, Adam Nurun. Yeah, again, it, it, the Sushi team has been waiting for a year to get payback. Finally get a chance to do it on the court in this year's championship game. Here's the whistle, and Tenzin University will start with it. As we predicted, Sushi in their zone. Deep pass. Safe. Sounds like a had that shot away. There are a couple guys there who could uh, get credit for that one. And that's what we said, just a tough back line to go against in that zone. Good opportunity, but just taken away by the length of Sushi. Deep shot, that's a lot with the three. And that's the challenge from seeing that pick and roll against the zone, the throw back. Big's got to come out late on that closeout. Now tip pass, and Denver the University heading down again. They're in white, fishing in the dark blues. As they lose it out of bounds, and it will be basketball too, fishing. We see again off of that block. That's not where their advantage is going to be. We saw them hit that three and then get the turnover with their speed on the defensive end. Over the top of the zone is Daniel. What goes the line with that end one? And that's one of those ones where you'd love to see your big go up and challenge. You just kind of stood under the basket, let him attack, not in position to take the block in no man's land and gets the end one for the early bucket for Sushi. Not 
where you like to see the zone and the press. You have no result on the pass. Offensive rebound and miss put back. They'll get another chance. Spain screens for Boca, stuttering, in range. Strong, and another finishing rebound. This time, the end team comes away with it. Back for Zanzan, he has push shot, too strong. And now, stepping out of bounds is Sushi. Yeah, PJ, the transfer from rival college, Furen University. That time with the pressure, steps on the baseline with mostly the two former high school teammates. Close to the basket, fight for the rebound. And now a foul on Thompson, yeah. And that's where Sumzer can find those opportunities, but it's just such tough shots against the length of Sushin. We've seen them have the right strategy, get to those weak spots, get to those soft spots in the zone, but just unable to put it in the basket. Loco across the timeline. Your trap on the baseline doesn't work. Good job reversing the floor, attacking the closeout. Andy not wanting to pick up a second foul, not as aggressive as he could have been. Shot big to the basket, flying in the air. It's going to be loose ball on the ground. Again, we see. NCCU throwing back against the zone. Breaking that past, past red. It's going to be a turnover. And that's going to be the tough part for the Sushin team. Yesterday with a ton of turnovers. Again, you can do that against the competition in the Final Four, but in the championship game, if you're going to give your opponent that many opportunities, you're going to make things very difficult for yourself. Baseline. Yoisa get close to Sansa. Yeah. It's gonna be a, a jump ball. Again, just that size. Able to poke the ball away. Not a lot of room to operate there, especially when you're starting from a stationary position, not movement against that zone. And it's been tough going in the interior for this Griffin starting out. Pass to Boko going to the rim. Running no good. And he to the corner. He is in. And they've had that pass a couple times earlier in the game. That time finally kicking it ahead to the corner. Again, if they push it against this team, NCU is going to have a lot of opportunities. Long Kayu. There's in a school of communications, as is a number of teammates. Now going to the basket, dropping it down low. There's a back door. Yeah, you can see Andy uh, just imploring his teammates to talk. Corner cutter, nobody communicated. Maybe they should go to the College of Communications, right? On the perimeter, Thunder, yeah. Dribble, Marsh from three, and it's a beautiful rainbow. Again, once again, throwing back against the zone. That time, not an initial opportunity as PJ was on the other side, but just a couple extra passes, able to get another three. The foul in transition, well, foul against the zone trap. It'll be three team fouls for the University of Griffin. Only one for Sushing. That's that aggressive defense. You're going to see them be a lot more aggressive playing full court, three quarters court press. Where Sushin's going to sit back in their zone and, and let their athletes go to work. Boca like the dribble left. His mid range, no. Ricochet, Tanzania gets the rebound. Skipping around, there's a foul call. Does not get the bounce. A couple players going down. Dramatic fashion. So again, attacking out of transition. 
<laughs> little soccer trip. We know that Daniel's going to be in the middle of that zone most of the time, but coming out of the game with his second early foul. Take his place, another junior YG Sen, as we call him. Both gentlemen from Nigeria. You can see after Make able to get into that 1 2 2 trap. Again, just trying to go and push the pace. And once again, creating a turnover. Just not able to finish in transition. Layup of the Yian A little bit careless with that last possession. This time, Zizi, patient with it. Yian driving and dishing, push shot, no good. Bastion with his first opportunity, missing close. Rides up, in and out dribble, pulls up, rolls out. You see a lot of shorts. The short shots here at the beginning of the game on both sides. A lot of shots that normally make that time. Able to triple full court against the press. So she able to get into the heart of that NCCU defense. Yanti with his first point of the game. Kicking out. Long three, that was in, three in a row. So again, they run plays with the most efficiency in anybody in college. Just such great execution, knowing where those opportunities are gonna be, and so far, making those shots. Spitting middle, but it makes the hook shot. Starting a little to start things, Wu Pei Jia. They don't call the push in the back. And the Sushi comes away with the rebound. Again, able to get good shots, just not able to get them to go down. The camp from the wall. Oka gets all the way there. And that's what you're going to see from Sushi. Just unbelievable individual talent. And then bad transition defense from NCCU. Just layups in transition. 5 for 14 is Sushi 0 for 8 since the university. See the basketball over the backboard, out of bounds. Couldn't make it three in a row. As we have our first time out of the game, already five minutes and 53 seconds came off the clock in the back and forth action. Thanks for tuning in to this broadcast on our way UBA action after this. Central University up 14 to 10. So sticking with that, one, two, two. Kind of, kind of stitching down on their time. A little collision. And Evoca able to finish the contact. Yeah, they've been able to get to the rim three possessions in a row. So again, just good individual talent. Alley-oop, left short. 
Once again, just great execution of the play. Not able to get the shot down. That was Theo Tanzania. Wang Yukai choosing to dribble it out. They keep passing off, open shot. Wang Yukai this time throws it. Three for four. And that's the trademark of this team. Again, we're looking for the best shot available. We're not looking for good shots. Uh, they probably could have forced up a couple layups against the defender, but two more passes, wide open three-pointers. Another made shot for this Griffins team. Now they flex the defense to a 2-3 themselves. Deep shot and a deep make. <laughs> Jin Ho Yu, Jr. A little bit slow with the rotation. It's going to be a foul on Wang Pei Jia. And again, just that individual skill out there, able to step way out on the perimeters. It looks like Andy's calling for a sub. I'm not sure what happened on that last possession, but with already one foul, he was playing with foul trouble, and now hopefully he'll go into the locker room and things will be okay. Might have took a stinger on that last play. non-contact ones, not one to speculate, but again, same play against the zone, screening the back two defenders, that time able to finish it once again, just excellent execution. Nice to see on a college level here in Taiwan. During alley used to a player 183 centimeters, not the norm, but Leente makes it work a lot of the times. Fast break opportunity up front, able to get the win in. Again, we said out in the beginning, these turnovers are going to be a killer against this NCCU team. So good at getting out in transition, able to finish over the rising defense of Iboka. Okay, you're already with 13 points in this one. On the season, he averages 11.9. Hook pass, right along on time. Iboka able to finish the baby hook. Yeah, just timely cut right there. Able to bail out his teammate who got stuck in the air. Way to attack the closeout. Yeah, uh, uh, hits the three. Plus range. And they've just done such a good job of forcing those backline defenders to come up so much farther than they're used to. When they're making their shots, it looks really pretty. Evoca, strip. And you see you the other way, able to find him. That's good. We said it a couple times already in the first quarter. Turnovers are going to lead to layups with this Griffins team. And we see it again, trying to dribble through traffic. And again, Aita just able to get to the line for an and one opportunity. You cannot keep turning the ball over if you want to have a chance to win at Mercer State University. Not a phone employing his hey, team to make sure to match up. That seems pretty logical. Hey, he's just talking about that problem we just identified. It's going to be used defending that wing. Again, those bigs are used to just staying down there in the, in the corner protecting the paint, but these players are forcing them to come up and defend that. A little bit of confusion internally, as we see right there in that three-pointer. Again, just telling them, imploring them, if you will. Somebody's got to come out and defend. As the timeout first, is the Griffins with a full cheering section behind us to our right. 
and that's where this strategy from NCCU kind of takes its effect. And you know that Sushin's going to have a, a much a shorter rotation than you. You push the pace. You get them up and down and running. Again, it may not pay off in the first quarter, but if you have faith that over four quarters, you're going to wear those starters down. And fortunately, it's worked for them in the first quarter. Missing the bonus. Number 11, the Jinkai, changing the pace. Flying in for the layup, but it bounces out. Through contact. Oh, the good of your eyes, though. Again, it's going to sound like a broken record, but this team gets out and runs so well with this Sushin team trying to go for steals. If you don't get it, you are dead in the water. Boca, through contact, is going to get the end one. Soft foul by the Sushin team. Yeah, he said it just a soft foul. It's the same thing we saw in the first play where Andy got his foul, just kind of being stuck in no man's land. At that point, take the charge, foul him hard, or just get out of the way. Standing there is just going to give him that and one opportunity. Two fouls on Atomkin, yeah. And again, between the apparent injury to Andy, two fouls on Tung Yeah. As great as this first quarter has gone for Tunzu University, definitely some concerns going forward. Egypt, seven in this place. Senior out of nice on high, along with the popular Ling Lee. Not to be confused with baseball player Ling Lee. Flying down on the drive, the Yanting. This is off the wild layup attempt. A little bit more wildness to finish that possession off. Interesting last 19 seconds of the half, but hey, eight point lead, you can get a little creative. The University up by eight, going to the break. Send the University inbound and start things off. Sushing with a 3 2 look now on their zone. Ball batted away. It's going to be a turnover. Yeah, that's what we said pre game. Again, they use that zone as a weapon. They just use it to create turnovers. That time, they put their best athlete in the middle of the zone. 
And again, starts out 3-2, turns into a 2-1-2. Two, two. Again, not a lot of room on the intimidator for those cuts. Number 11, Chen Longhai, running the point. Loba trying to get through traffic. He's going to get the foul on the shot attempt. Yeah, just a step late on the help and trying to shrink the floor. A little bit tougher on their shooters there. And everybody knows the game plan. Take away his space. Don't let him get there and use his athleticism just a little bit late on the rotation. Part of yesterday's 26 points, 20 rebound performance also included eight turnovers, none so far. There comes the famous Ryan Jinx. Somebody keep a tally of how many times I do it versus how many times Coach does it. I've never jinxed him. Makes the pair. Quickly to the basket. Missing it too much English. Going to be out of bounds off to the university. And we can see this, this two on two zone taking effect. Couple, couple tough shots. A little tougher look than that two three. Now the university matching up a little bit more. Boca goes toward the middle and gets a foul. And that's why the university wanted to push the pace. Again, when you get in there at halftime, try to compete with them athletically, it becomes a little bit difficult. You push the pace, and again, take that out of play, use your speed, and it becomes a lot more beneficial to you. And Lee with a quick three fouls out of the game, and the starting back to the back of the game for this Griffin Swasson. Awesome. First missed free throw by Iboka. Two strong with the second, and there's Sebastian to the rim. Just like that, then the university gets in their two best guards. Again, you can expect some better execution same plays they started the game out with. Again, no one to find out where those shooters are. He missed by Sandoya. That's a good job by the Sushin University coaching staff. Again, you don't let the offense get too much of a look at the same zone. Put them in a different zone, make them adjust. Again, and they've had trouble so far. And out of bounds, Sebastian. Couldn't gather in time. And that's where really you only feel comfortable with a Boca putting the ball on the floor. Whether it's Daniel or Sebastian, or more of a wait for other people to create the opportunities and finish. A good job by the Griffins to force him into putting the ball on the floor. Sounds how soon. Freshman will check back in. Go ahead and fire from deep. And again, put three at the top of the zone. Penetrate, kick. Just another great execution. To the baseline, Sebastian blows the layup. Now at pace, there's a foul. Let's see if it's Check if it's a two or a three. But that's what we said. Go for steals in the backcourt. You just kill yourself. One pass ahead to the corner. Wide open three-pointer. Now we're just see which came first. It looks like that second bump came after, or at least at the same time as the three. So it should count, but I've never been one to know what the refs are thinking, Ryan. Yo Yang, the player credited with the foul. 
as the referees go to the monitor. And again, it's you see these these Griffins are just off on the release of the ball. Uh, and they have faith that their teammates are going to get those defensive rebounds and, and get that outlet quick. And despite the fact that sushin has been good on jamming those outlets, when, when you put one more person in the backcourt, you're going to be playing five on three against this Griffins team. And they've gotten some great looks in transition so far. And that might actually be part of the reason why teams kind of abandoned big men in the dunker spot because you got a guy that's not in a great rebounding position. Exactly, and that's just modern basketball. And that's why, you know, you see Andy go out for this Griffin team and they really don't miss a beat. Again, we saw that second hit right there. He's already in the action. Easy call, just stupid foul right there in a big moment. And you can see the coaching staff rewarding him by sitting him back on the bench. But uh, again, we talked about modern basketball and Sushin says, you know what? I'm gonna go back in there with two bigs and have faith that we're not gonna let you run because you're gonna need to box us out. Yang checks back into the game to a lot of fanfare. Yeah. So will the first time Li Zonghan, the shortest player on the two teams registered today. Corner overshoots it. But same play, just thrown back against that zone, forcing the big to rotate. At that time, just not able to hit the shot. And, and again, it looks like something got hit the penis, Ryan. Let me look at that one again. Possible. Again, they're just, they got a formal wall in transition. Not letting Boca get any room. Commit a lot his way, leads to a mid range out. Looks like there's going to be out of bounds on that play in transition. What about the mid range shot? But again, it's just so dangerous. A missed mid range jumper. One outlet pass. Yeah, easy call there, but Sushin very fortunate as these Griffiths continue to run it down the Sushin University defense. Just broke. Not playing with their starting back for C3 go up. And now a loose ball foul by Wu. First back into the game. Again, and that's that's why this NCCU team is so good at running. They have faith that these wings are going to come in and help rebound. Again, just great position there by the forwards, sealing the bigs, creating a foul, because you really can't get any of those fast break opportunities if you don't get that rebound. To the corner, firing away, bang! <laughs> has his sights on a career high. Easy block shot, out of bounds. No, saves it for Tunzi University. Hesitated for a second, now they're on the break. Easy ball out of bounds off of Sushi. Almost a wrong play and good luck, bad luck four or five times on that one possession. Yeah, but you just see this NCCU roster, their eyes just get so wide the second they get the ball because they're just going to get down so quickly. Well, and one, Jim, with the push shot. And now a technical. And that's where they're going to get you. They beat you on the outside. Andy just doing a great job on the seal. EJ frustrated because getting blocked on one end, getting sealed on the other end. Again, just textbook performance here so far in the first half by this Griffins team. Four personal fouls. He'll go to the bench. Make way for Upoling. And you know what? That's that's probably not a good thing for her. For NCCU, they've actually done really well with PJ on the floor. And now we'll see how his substitute does. Hits the 
free throw, extending this to a 16 count lead. Now you look at the uh, extracurriculars. And that's one of those ones that in the pro leagues you're probably going to let go. Obviously emotional, frustrated more than himself than anything, but in college, we're going to call it a little bit tight, right? Yeah, his bonus free throw. Let's see if Sushi can find an offensive spark besides Yukoka. From the corner, three, offline. A loose ball foul by Tenzi University. Let's see who it's on. Well, they had four guys boxing out Daniel, so they can choose whoever they want. Looks like he'll be on number nine at Zongtao Sud. Shortest player for Tenzi University on the court. As you'd expect, this game getting chippy. Iboka really taunting Daniel out there. Dan Daniel, no, I'm sorry, Andy. Andy's teammate holding him back, knowing how important it is. But we're less, we haven't even played four minutes in the second quarter, and both teams are in the bonus, right? One for two trip. After that first quarter, I haven't seen him get the chance to assault the rim. And in the middle of the zone. Oh, he's the offense, but it's a good shot. And through the crowd noise, he calls timeout. And again, it's just that same action up top. They're going against the zone. Again, defenders relaxing after the ball is not in their hands. So again, NCCU just dominant here so far in the first half. We'll go to a break. We're back to the end. University putting the waiting back in. Uh, just looking for a spark, somebody who else who can score on the court. And right now they've struggled with Iboka attracting so much defensive attention and really nobody else stepping up to the plate. End up turning the basketball over. Good anticipation by Tennessee University. Guys, uh, down low, D and D block at the rim. Uh, same play they got earlier, getting Daniel is up. But he, there's a turnover and the foul by Iboka. Yeah, that's where Iboka. You said it earlier. There's that Ryan Jinks, but he had eight turnovers yesterday. That time he's got to recognize three defenders on him. You know what? Give it up. Trust your teammates. But again, just too much dribbling and turnover and then the foul. We'll take a seat. So, Sushi University going with two true centers. This free throw. Wang Kai Yu. Guessing he's yeah. missed, huh? Five for eight from the field. Trying to make up for that first one. Can't do it. 
So I guess uh, Sushi has got their man. <laughs> Trying to execute a trap. It's successful. The two on zero. And the slam. The University is physical on defense. And been a lot of problems for the subs for Sushi. And now a travel call. They've just rushed them so much. They're just playing at mm -hmm. NCCU's pace. Uh, again, you see their their leader, the way thing up there, just encouraging everybody, telling their subs how to play, how they need to be competitive. But uh, there's only so much that they can do. Inside the outside, deep three. We get the big ricochet. That didn't almost pop it up. Daniel from the high post gets the shot. He said earlier we haven't heard his name much in the second quarter. Missing in. On the follow. I guess the only thing he can do is hit free throws, Ryan. Again, done it from behind the three-point line. Done it in transition. Trying to push the pace. Since the University pokes that out of bounds. And that's the problem with the, the dribble-heavy defense against this NCCU defense. They're so good at back tips. Uh, again, just attacking the ball. They know that they're not going to be able to steal the ball up high, so when these bigs put the ball on the floor, they're tipping it away, trying to get those steals. And, and Coach Ray out there pleading with the refs. Not sure what about, because everything's going pretty smoothly for them so far, up 21. Well, he wants to take advantage, especially when they got the subs in, like Yi Zhonghan. And we saw a struggle big time. Let's listen in. Yeah, there's, the, there's the back tip. The ref saying it is off the, the Griffin's point guard, but they're just so active on the dribble. Tatsuhisha,好,阿朱一下,然後再來是,有耐心一點,誒,誒,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好,好
ever since Daniel's in the game. That's a little bit tougher shot to make. Waiting. Crash to mid range, no good. Bastion gets another possession. Still fighting. It's going to be a rebound turn to turnover. Montpellier slows it up. Push fire from the corner. Didn't get that time. It's a run out opportunity for Sushi. Going multiple behind the back. We got a little bit of a pocket for the university. It's a little unnecessary behind the back. Oh, it looks really good if you make it. It's the open one. Andy Cohen and Ben Simmons down there passing up the wide open layup. But You only get credit for it if it's a finish in a dunk attack. This from the corner. Couldn't have done that too. Again, both ends looking a little sloppy here offensively. Another three. This time off iron. Yeah, team trying to euro and block. Are you alright, bro? One of a rare occasion since the university to slow it up. We said that everybody high off of emotions in the first quarter, a little bit tired now in the second, but Andy struggling to finish. And again, another foul in the backcourt. And that's where this Sushing team's going to have a chance. Again, they had some great execution from the Griffins here in the first half, but they had some great shot making ability as we see another defensive performance, point guard on point guard action. But again, if, if NCCU starts missing some of these threes and the decision can continue to put pressure on the defense, put pressure on the rim, then they can get back in this game very quickly. At this point, two minutes left in the first half. They just kind of cut it over 15, give themselves a little bit of momentum, and give them something good to say at halftime. Another miss. It's starting to stack up. I'm going to get another chance, though. And again, we talk about putting pressure on the rim. That's where we have Sebastian there. We've got NCCU's two in there trying to keep him off the boards. Got a little bit too eager there. Give the Daniel another chance. Important minutes for, for Sons of University. Again, Lin Lee came in earlier, and that's been not great offensively. Picked up three really quick fouls. Again, this is Sushin's chance to, to kind of cut into this lead. Again, he's trying to three, so it's kind of slowing down from the outside. They were in Sydney 10 for 13 previously. Going to the basket with success. Going to go to the line again. That's yeah. And we saw earlier in the game, after those makes, NCCU was able to slow down this offense, but now after misses, they're able to get out and run and, and just, again, just put pressure on the defense. And they've been rewarded with a lot of trips to the line so far here in the second quarter. Yeah, he's on the board with his first point. Out of Saming High School. Okay, and you said if Sushin can cut it under 15, maybe get it somewhere closer to 10, they're going to go into halftime feeling a lot better. In 40 seconds, they've already cut it to 17. So, again, good job by the coaching staff to keep them involved in this game, knowing that there's still a long time to go. Middle. Got to start over. Six seconds on the shot clock. Motion with it. Oh, it was set off the backboard. All good now with 12 points. <laughs> you said incendiary, Ryan. And hey, when you got it going good, you got it going good. Oh, you. 
Trying to drive middle, leads it to the basket. One of the rare occasions where hitting the rim is not a good shot. To the basket, all the way to the press area. Look out. Nashon goes down hard, but he's back up. Who was over there? Was that Manute Bowl? Was that... Manute Bowl, maybe if he took an airliner. I don't, I don't know who can jump that high. Maybe they should just stick to shooting these threes and... Hey, if the bank is open on Sundays, the bank is open. Might as well use it. Daniel, trying to go into the body. Off rim. Get another chance. Drives the pass it and turns it over. And just no room in the interior there. And kind of without having the ability to stretch out that defense. Some tough passes there for Suzy. Setting for a last shot, Ling Lee. Bouncing it off the defense. And it looks like time will expire. Says the university up by 20 points. Stick around as we will have an interview before we head to break. Coach Wade, the player who's going to give us a little bit of insights to the first half and what he plans on talking to the boys at in the halftime. 场边访问到郑智大学的陈子威教练上半场领先分数有所松懈拼抢上面大家都是很积极的所以在下半场还是要持续这么的有侵略性谢谢教练接受我们的访问请继续加油好那在上半场比赛结束政治大学五十一比三十一战时的二十分领先那我们先休息一下待会进到中场的时间
Shenzhou University and Sushing. I'm Ryan Chen, breaking things down at halftime with a Coach Metcalf. The thing that surprised me the most really is, well, one, how Hao Wang Kai Yu is so far with 18 of the first and a half of points. And the other, Song Chao Sun, stepping up with Stepping up and reliably scoring and creating any damage on the offensive end is Evoca with 13 points. Only has one turnover, which is comes in the positive thing, but we'll see if this fatigue level will still allow him to be an effective player. One hand scoring, on the other hand, not giving the basketball up. Give credit to Xi Jing for utilizing their first quarter and second quarter time as really well, leading to a couple runs for them.
，给台北市立大学的这群同学，市立大学的掌声，太精彩了！On our, on our way is the slogan for UVA in the year 110. Since the university enjoying a 20 point lead, and a big part of that is that three point shooting have netted 30 points to Sushi University, who enjoy a little bit of a bonus at the free throw line, but they're going to have to do a lot more to overcome a 20-point deficit, Coach. Yeah, again, as we talked about, NCCU just shooting unbelievably from behind the three-point line. A lot of that was just game plan stuff. A lot of it was the ability to run off Sushin's turnovers. But again, Sushin knows how they're going to win. Get to the line, punish this NCCU defense, and one possession at a time. Mankai leads the field with 18 oh, points, and Zhang Haosun, the freshman, with 12 on the Sushi that Iboka with 13, but like I'm wondering, was his energy levels maintained for the rest of the game, and can you find that spark on offense, but perhaps defense the bigger concern for the Sushi University. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see one of two things. One, if they're gonna stay in that zone, NCCU, regardless of whether...
the highlight package before the start of the second half is Wang Kai 18 points with 7 of 20 from the field. Also adding the six crucial rebounds. You know everyone counts. Uh, he said doing it inside and out. Obviously stretching the defense with that three-point shot, just getting to spots in the zone that he knows there aren't going to be defenders. And then a little showtime on the break, doing a chin up on the rim. But Again, we've seen it with this team all season. It's really never about one person. They'll have one person step up in the first half, another in the second. So let's see what happens this second half. Once again, stinking around for the finals is the Chinese Taipei gold medal weightlifter, Beijing. Yeah, somebody knows a thing or two about championships. The stadium is finally completely lit up after the halftime performance. Zixing will start with the basketball. And the key for them is just turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Cut down on the turnovers, keep NCCU out of transition. They got a chance to pull this game out. Might have got away with a traveling then. And a hard contest. Rebound to Sushi. This time they can't finish. They'll stay with them. Again, something to pay attention to is a little bit of foul trouble on NCCU's side. Is it's on you. And they're starting forwards with three fouls. And again, got him off to a hop start. They need to have him on the court. Iboka spins baseline and able to get the jumper. Immediately a foul, switching in transition on a made basket, nonetheless. And we talked about the pressure that Sushin puts on your defense. The pace that NCCU plays with just puts so much pressure on your defense as well. To the basket and around everybody. That's brilliant. And we've seen him do it time and time again previously. He'd been looking to pass that time with the hesitation and then using the rim to protect the ball. Just a beautiful finish from the sophomore guard. Correction, that's right though, but right in front of me on the big scoreboard, that's a question mark over his third character. Nobody needs to go to school about that. Chinese is not the easiest language in the world. Now he's starting to break a one-hand early pass. Long time here. Picked up his dribble, though restart. Yeah, better job right there by Sushin stopping the break. They're gonna need a lot more of that. Patient with it. At the rim, block shot. They call it a shot clock violation. Well, that's the first time we've seen one of those spectacular blocks on the Sushin defense side. Yes, he thought he had a clean look, but Russ called it a clean block. Starting to pull her off from the high. Boca over the left side, rips out. Down with the rebound, and another three off the bank. The second three of the game. Again, offensive rebounds. Uh, that's exactly how they're gonna get back, gonna get back in this game. Kyrie dribbles out of the corner. Or a shot, but commit the foul. Once again, that's number 24, you Just an unselfish play. Guard to guard back screen and just a little bit aggressive on that closeout. But you know, again, when he's as hot as he was in the first half, that's what it's going to do to him. And Kyrie missing again from the free throw line. Coming out of halftime, Coach Ray brought his team out of the huddle. Didn't talk any X's and O's with him. Obviously telling him, hey, this isn't about any plays. This isn't about any strategy. We just do what we do. We can pull this game out. Not just trying to wait these 20 minutes out. I want to go one for three. Throws a 
allow them to get into that 1-2-2. Two, two. Extended press. Get them to play at their pace. But their scoring guards get a little bit more active, not waiting for a Boca anymore. Good sign for those Sushin fans out there. Waiting able to get the close one as Dwight misses his close shot. Them up in the free game, the OI team only had four points. Again, they're going to have that scoring punch. It's just a matter of getting stops. And they should have seen it's done a good job so far on the break. UMG at the rim. Yeah, that first one was a little bit questionable. That one not questionable at all. They're just able to get Daniel up against the zone. That's that was pretty obvious. And you can't attend to the one, two, two. Doesn't create enough pressure. Trying to catch Eliza on the top. They don't. It's going to be a bridge player. Again, just coming out of this break. Not trying to throw the ball to Boca every time. Everybody trying to look at the basket. Just a completely different team coming out of this halftime break. Okay, his first point and another turnover by Ten Two. And that's where sometimes it's tough playing with a lead. That's where Ray was trying to tell him, hey, you know what? Don't worry about that too much. Just play like we started out this game, 0-0. Zero, zero. Win every quarter and we'll be fine. Going to change the strategy. Sushi playing three guards. Daniel trying to go middle behind the back, right to Central University, pushing up ahead. The Yanti over the finish with the left hand. He said earlier in the game, if you can get Daniel to put the ball on the floor, consider that a success if you're the defense. Again, great job there stealing the ball. On the other side, able to get the finish. Again, that's what he does best. Great job slipping in behind the defense and putting in the easy shot. Hunza, yeah, slaps the pass. Running out of time, jump pass. And there's finally play stop. DMD underneath had his chances. <laughs> he's, had, he's had his struggles finishing today. Missed the initial opportunity. I thought there may have been a goal 10 there, but again, sticking with it, able to get to the line. And we see Aboka continue to uh, be very chatty with Andy. Five points. Like that's, that's where he's got a different role than Daniel or Boca have. This uh, of the team doesn't really rely on him to score. They just need him to be in the right place, which he was on that possession. Uh, and they can let their locals take him. Boca tries to throw. See with, with the other locals being more aggressive. If Boca finds himself with much more room against this defense, there's just completely different spacing on the court. Trying to stretch that defense out. Something yeah, on the left side. And a loose ball foul. Sin Long Kai. Slow to get the rebound. And again, with, with the shooter out of the games. With, Looks like it may be cramps over there. Not as much space for NCCU either. Something that they're going to have to talk about at this timeout. 427 left in the third. Sushing, inching their way back.
University about to bring on substitution Zhang Tao Se. He to try to help out with the spacing, help out with the pace. Meanwhile, for Si Xing, no changes to their starters, well, their guys on the floor. Again, we talked about this is a deep NCCU roster. Again, being able to pull these freshmen up in championship games is quite a luxury as we see once again the exact same play. Screen in the backside of the zone for the lob and again throwing it for one of your guards is such a luxury for any coach. Daniel trying to dribble drive and they're going to bounce it off of Iboka's body. I believe I may have said it once or twice, if, if you can get him to put the ball on the floor, that's what you want. But again, just throwing the lob between your, your one and your two creative offense from NCCU. Now a handoff. All of a sudden, a little to the left. Sushing. Get a chance to run. Boca drops it off for <laughs> University. Again, the start of the game with not a lot of turnovers, but he's got into the problem he had yesterday. As his coach is telling him to calm down, but we've seen Sushin do a much better job in transition defense here in the second half, just getting people back, creating a turnover there. Right now, turnovers 11 to 7 in favor of Central University. That margin slowly catching up. Finally making a move, Zong And Iboka. Oh, he no, it's Daniel. Again, those locals looking to score. Defense has to respect it. Opens up for everybody else. Yeah, they'll hook the three. Seen that play again, just screening the two wings of the zone, letting the point guard up go against Daniel, getting into the paint and then distributing. Fire from deep. Don't tie, missing. They're leaking him open, and now it's back to a new AC. One man to beat, able to get the lefty finish. Time out for the University. Yeah, up by 14. We've seen him cut it to 14 earlier, but once again, a lot of dribbling up the court for, for NCCU, a little bit different than what we saw in the first half. Something, yeah, had that one tipped. They hang on. Yeah, T. Missing in. Yo, I deal with the offensive rebound. As you can ill afford. Now it's remissed. Yeah, we said that Sushin's going to have a chance. NCC, you can't stay as hot from the three point line and just taking advantage of the strength and transition, cutting it to a 12 point game. You know, the University has not fouled in this quarter, but you're almost thinking that might help a little bit. Sushin cutting it to a 12. Down the middle. Yeah, you said it's just not the intensity that they started the game out, and, and that's the challenge that you have. You're up 20, you start to take your, your foot off the gas a little bit, and you find yourself in a 14-point game. The way they thought about it for 28. Give it up. Daniel from deep three, off the rim. Referee call it for Tinsy University. Maybe I should amend my, my Daniel amendment. If you have him putting the ball on the floor, have him shooting a three, I think the defense can continue, consider that a victory. Daniel has made one of six threes before this weekend. It wouldn't be a uh, first occurrence. It would be a second occurrence. <laughs> Up in Lee Zohan getting another try. And Yoaito almost throws it for a turnover. Now a traveling ball for the rest of the game for Yeah. Oh, 
again, we're seeing a little bit of fatigue from the starters, the subs getting in, and it can get a little bit dicey here in college when you put the subs in the championship game. Leg, Yuboka saving before the timeline. Low on time, he's gonna go right. Pull up shot, no. Offensive rebound by Fresh in the game. Go hot. Couple subs, one for each team. Ling Li is in. And so too will Liu Yang for Su Xing. Short leash for Coach Ray out there. One defensive possession left. We're in between two offensive players. It's going to be a backcourt violation. We're probably see another oh. offense or defense substitution, but I can't remember the last time I saw a game and, and had a team not commit a single foul in the entire quarter, Ryan. And we're about 5.31 seconds away from NCCU doing just that. Uh, coach saying some interesting things. That's what I do, right? I say interesting things. Good screen. Drive shot from the right side. Off iron. Okay, opportunity. Uh, fortunate. You know that he's going to get that three up. Might as well chase him off the line. But uh, again, fortunate for Sushin after a great third quarter. Not over yet. Ten minutes away from grinding a champion. This is University, not out of it yet. Iboka showing off a little bit of that spark he started the game with. Help defense also there too. And like you mentioned, Coach, since the university, good thing they didn't commit any fouls. Some guys in foul trouble, but that might have stopped some of that sushing run. Yeah, again, just not the aggressive performance they had earlier in the game. Uh, I'm sure the coaching staff reminded them of that fact a couple of times in that timeout. Hey, they're not going to give us this 10 minutes. We got to earn this 10 minutes. The corner off iron and sounds like a yeah, mistimed his offensive rebound jump. Yeah, well, again, good execution, just not able to hit the shot. Boca misses that one close. That's a tough one, perfect cut. Nice little half hook opportunity to cut it to a 12 point game. That's not able to get it to go. Big lead. 
to the corner. Not afraid of the low amount of time. Andy flicking it off the rim. Well, actually off the backboard, really. And it's a full on three that he doesn't take advantage of. I think that could be fatigue. You know, Boca working really hard to get his 21 points so far today. Not able to take advantage of that odd man break. With the basket and a hard foul. King getting the driver. Uh, Telling the ref on that he went up one handed because he was getting held, but can you see the creative finish? Just trying to get it up on the glass. Yeah, he's had his struggles there in the paint finishing. Done a good job just sealing defenders, creating opportunities for other people. Monkai is checking back into the game. He was getting stretched out there in the third quarter. And that's going to happen in these championship games. We saw Provoca getting worked on a little bit in the first half. How are you doing it a little bit in the second half? I'm trying to warm up there. We'll just get loose and hopefully a shooting touch will come back. He maneuvers across the baseline. He probing, getting it inside. Candy with a dribble. Absolutely. Yeah, just a great hesitation, knowing that Evoke is going to go for any pump fake. Again, just patient. Finally able to get a layup to go down. First score in the fourth quarter. Evoca. Out there. And he throws the three. And that's what we didn't see him do in the first half. In the first half, he would take that extra dribble and turn the ball over. Much better job in the second half, attracting four, kicking it out, trusting your teammates. On the hand up, rimming in and out. Left inbound. Probably could have used another favorite tank, but there's an out of bounds by Sushi. Yeah, on the fast break. And those ones just kill you. Again, you got a great stop. Got away with a foul, possibly, and then you throw it away when you're trying to cut this to a 10-point lead. It just kills the momentum that you could have had. Yeah, he's up on the right side. Rainbow goes out of bounds. And right now, the interesting thing is to see how Co how long Coach Ray goes with his backup point guard in the game. Again, we've seen Yoiza have a complete control of the pace. There's been a little bit of a challenge with, with his replacement. On the bench with only one foul. Now switching on everything. We shall rehaul open. This three getting two bounces and out. Okay, you passes it out. Attracting a little bit of attention after that hot first half. Good patience. Lee this time goes to the hoop. Missing. Team rebound by Sushi. Sohan poked away from behind. There's a foul first. Ling Li <laughs> sprinted up ahead, but not going to get the chance. There's a foul. Yeah, Coach Ray wanting a U on the breakaway pass. And that's what we've seen this NCCU defense do all game. Just poke from behind. You know that they're going to be dribbling the ball up the court. And we get another steal. And Another turnover for Sushi. Well, there's the substitution. Lumi going down for Yoaito. Well, again, Coach Ray just getting him extra three minutes here in the fourth quarter. Well, there are three three. Might have been partially tipped by Yoyang. Trying to take Yoyang. Can't finish on the other end. And the lay-in. 
can't hurt you. Right now, getting his team to within 10 points. said it before, when, when the, the local players are being aggressive offensively and they reward Boca, a completely different team for this team squad here in the second half. Ten minutes to go. Ten point game. that dribbles it off. Sushi for a quick turnover. Now Daniel couldn't get the hook. Team rebound by Tenzu University. All the momentum. Ali doesn't get the incredible athletic play. Tipping the pass away. Yeah, a couple turnovers in a row. And Sushi able to take advantage. Again, we got a single digit deficit here. 550 to go. This halftime, Tenzu University hasn't really had a good solution against this 2-1-2. Yeah, but that's the weapon that they've used all game, all season. Another good stop. Yeah, we've seen a couple bad decisions. Three-pointers not falling in nearly as well as they were in the first half. Two man on Ivoca gives it up, floats it. Missing barely, and there's something out for another rebound. Yeah, better job chasing him off the line. Again, you know that Naboka and Daniel are going to be in the paint. Not a lot of room there. Right now, it's just going to come down to who's able to make shots and get stops. To the corner. Still can't find the accuracy. And a little dodgeball goes something out's way. Yeah. Caillou, a rough second half after that <laughs> unbelievable first half performance. Uh, really, just one free throw here in cramps. It looks like <laughs> it's going to be a struggle to finish these last five minutes. Everybody's going to get an extra breath as they wipe up the floor. And Ryan, I think everybody really needs it. Both teams looking exhausted, just playing their hearts out in the championship game. The basket this time easy and accepted. The screen wasn't there. Sushi playing better in space. Let's slow it up. Don't have through the screen. Passing it to not much more space. Now driving his float shot off of iron. Yoiza gets it out. Push by a screen, he blocked at the rim. Yeah, we saw that time not going with the pump fake, going straight up. Oboka with a beautiful block. Driving kick kick back to Oboka. He makes the layup. That's not much going for NCCC. Few with the three-point basket not going here in the second half. Another block that simply hangs on to it this time. It 
try it again. This time the punt fake and the foul. And that's what he's done successfully. And again, second time this game, second time he's caught him, second time he's got the foul called. This time it's on Liu Yang. Yeah, Boca again. That's why they leave him on the back line instead of playing the middle of the zone. Exactly, and Daniel in there in the middle just eats up space. Big clutch free throws here by Andy. Second one coming up right now. At the University, six for ten from the line. Dan with nine points, six rebounds. Does <laughs> she have enough time? Go. They're staying patient with that zone attack. Down to Daniel getting all the attention. <laughs> and the referees get that travel call eventually. <laughs> yeah, we tell players to throw it out in front of you, but not three <laughs> steps. A turnover as I can see from behind Sushi's Vince Leoitis still trying to work something out. Uh, after that injury yesterday, really not looking like himself. But you got to play the, the hand you're dealt. Got to go down low. And then the three finally goes down. And he's just screaming for, for the frustrating second half he's had. Cutting this back to a double-digit lead and getting back to his first half self. Immediately, Sushi University trying to call and count out amidst the noise. Let's listen in. No, leave here. Yeah, don't leave here, here, here. Maybe one step, okay? Too deep, okay? So you pass you late, okay? No, always, uh, always shooting guard. Always 10. Shooting guard. Okay? So don't leave. Don't leave. Close. Hey, deny, 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 deny. Pass, deny. Okay? Change way. Okay? We side. Okay? Go. Okay, okay. Keep. 然后一直在打快一点,打快一点要投了 叫他们在做挡裁没有关系嘛 Out of the timeout, Sushi reminding the guys to be sure to expand the zone now that the university is going to start making threes again uh, Again, that's the issue they had in the first half who was coming up off the back line to defend They've done a good job for the first 17 minutes of the second half and letting that one go. NCCU, this is back to a double digit lead. Uh, the Ian team is going to get a break for Yuzu Wuhan. And the defense, and breaks it. And that's where he said that Wang Kai Yu cramped up. It looks like he's struggling, was able to hit that shot, but defensively just, just can't really move left to right out there. Yoiza kicks it out. Open shot, missed. Now it's in the university and, and defense. And that's just a stupid foul. Again, you're two minutes left in the game. Yes, you want to be physical, but he's not going to catch the ball. You're not going to push him out. Again, just no reason for that foul. So it's 14 on the shot clock. Boca didn't get the crossover. Gives it up. Missed layup. Something yet with a long rebound. Just, just great help there. Great close out. Forcing the drive. Not a lot of room. Two minutes. They 
Try cross screening. Yo Aiza with a tough finish. Back to a 10 point lead. Down big, but they can't be in too much of a hurry. Every possession counts, as there we have a foul. And those are those fouls you can live with. Again, you're taking time off the clock. You're making them work. As you said, we've seen this play the whole game. Letting Isaac go one-on-one -on -one against Daniel. That time, an unbelievable finish hanging in the air. Finishing over Iboka after a couple turnovers earlier in the fourth quarter. Making up for it here late. Isaac becoming the fourth player to score double digits for Central University. Boca, give it room, shoots the three. Back iron, another opportunity for Sushi to the rim. It's gonna be Jan with a foul. He thought he got wrist. And again, Sushi, you're going up against some dot, but you're also going up against the clock. And again, there's really no time to waste. You've got a 10 point deficit, and we've said this all the time. And when refs in Taiwan see you bring your hand down, they're going to call the foul. And Andy should know that by now. But now the key is going to be, is Sushin going to press full court? Are they going to try and speed up the pace? Are they going to try and create some turnovers? How are they going to create extra possessions in this game? Bad miss by Li Zhonghan. On the season, he's only taken 20 free throws. He's made 14 before the weekend. Five points to a five shooting. Fast in the first half, but get him in a lot of range in the second. Those two adjustments hit. And that's partially because of the injuries that, that Sushin has out there, putting some guys who, who may not be up to this spot. But again, they're still letting NCCU just walk the ball up the court. No pressure at all. I mean, you're down nine points, one minute left, unless you have a couple five point plays. You may want to speed the game up a little bit. Joiza maybe faking the stumble, no lift pass. Dive for the basketball. And it's called a jump ball. And you know what? It may be an awful possession, but that is the perfect possession for NCCU. You get in there, you take 24, uh, 23.7 seconds off the clock. You don't let them have a fast break. You can get into your full court defense if you want. Again, obviously you don't want to hit with the turnover, but it could be a lot worse. Also, maybe not in this game, but the last game, you can get substitutions in if you'd like. Exactly, so again, we see them going back into their 1-2-2 two, two token pressure. Again, just slowing down the game. And, with a nine point deficit. That's not something this is she can do. And they turn it over. Central University is gonna hang on to this one. They're definitely not gonna mind a 24 second violation here. Now Sushi realizes that the guards pushing up. Still not committing any foul. Dante missing the three. Long rebound. Play the tip game and it's NCCU to control it. Bottom of it down, they still got to shoot it. Yeah. Looks like they're going to take the uh, 24 second violation. Oh, they turn it on. Score table, doesn't have it. And VP champions are NCCU, Griffins, Sydney University, two time champs defeating Sushi. Proving to be the most resilient team that had to look out for coach. Lost a shoe. <laughs> Gonna do the throwing celebration early. Coach Luay and a lot of the guys who we expect to be playing for the last time at the collegiate level get to celebrate with the ship. And just a great team effort for this Griffins team. As you said, Ryan, numerous players 
five, four players in double digits, one with eight, one with nine. <laughs> I mean, that's how they've had their success, not just this season, but with last season. Just an unbelievable team performance leading to a second championship. Well, Kyrie wasn't able to surpass his season high, but 22 points, including that dagger three, to yeah. finish things off. Yeah, and that's kind of what happened to NCCU this entire game. Just a great first half. Unfortunately, they had a 20-point lead to play with because it started looking a little scary there at the end, but able to pull out a nine-point victory against a, a tough Sushin squad. Our broadcast will continue with the championship ceremony presentation. Look, college basketball and basketball in general in Taiwan Continue to see increase in popularity, increase in attention. And after on our way in the year 110, looking forward to what happens next. Yeah,不管是凱玉啊,還有鄭雅啊,然後畢竟Andy也是在裡面有要到優勢,所以我就是盡量去配好球給他們去出手,所以就是很謝謝他們,沒有他們的話我做不到。教练团每个人为我们雄鹰付出的人然后以及大乐加油团队没有他们的话真的我们做不到所以真的谢谢他们好那么接下来场边再接下来要访问到的是王凯玉凯玉今天攻下了正大全队最多的二十二分投进五个